Friends of Mia Farrow lining up to support her today in her legal and emotional battle with longtime lover and film mentor Woody Allen, as real life continues to imitate his movies in a real life plot thickens. Well, sex with you is really a Kafkaesque experience. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I mean that as a compliment. The sex scandal surrounding think, comedian filmmaker Woody Allen is taking on Kafka-esque overtones, and it's not a compliment. To be betrayed not only by your lover, you know, the man you've spent all this time with, um, but with a daughter that you've shared, that you've raised together, was, um, was obviously devastating. Mia Farrow's friend, Maria Roach, revealed a letter in which Miss Farrow says the whole thing has her close to a meltdown. Farrow was now charging Allen molested a seven-year-old adopted daughter, in addition to his admitted relationship with 21-year-old Soon Yi Farrow Previn. All this, the breakup of the Allen Farrow relationship and the custody battle over the children, comes as the last Allen Farrow movie is about to be released, starring Allen as a college professor in love with a 19-year-old student. I don't know, maybe people weren't meant to have one deep relationship. Maybe we're meant to have, you know, a series of relationships with different links. Or maybe go back to the old ones. Now, reports out of Hollywood say that Woody Allen will replace Mia Farrow in his next film with longtime co-star Diane Keaton. Well, 4 News Now would not be complete unless we showed you this. What a wedding these two lovebirds had. The bride and groom were decked out in their finest. The Elvis sang and even performed the wedding David, ceremony. Wilt thou have this woman to be thy wedded wife? <laughs> then it was time to jump to their honeymoon. There they go, there they go, beautiful plunge together, and now they're hanging upside down, man and wife, bouncing away. Hey, hey. Look at that. Yes, there they go, they're hanging upside down, man and wife. There they go, there they go, the beautiful plunge together, and now they're hanging upside down. Man and wife. Anything to get on 4 News Now. And that'll wrap up our show today. I'm Tony Segretto. Thank you so much for joining us. Stay tuned now for the Channel 4 News at 6 with Kelly Craig and Jerry Helfman. Good night, everybody. Tonight on the Channel 4 News at 6, a grieving family says goodbye to a 19-year-old, the victim of an alleged racial attack. Two reports, including the call that was meant to save his life. Chrissy's been asking me, Mommy, who's going to walk me down the aisle when I get married? A widow coping with her husband's brutal murder killed in front of her children. Tropical Storm Andrew hanging in there. Brian tells us what it means for South Florida. And a royal ruckus over a nude romp by Fergie. It's a story you won't want to miss. I'm Kelly Craig. Tom Randalls is off. Jerry Helfman joins me next for the Channel 4 News at 6. Watch our teamwork. Channel 4 News. From your 24-hour news source, this is Channel 4 News at 6. With Kelly Craig, Tom Randalls, meteorologist Brian Norcross, weather, Tony Segreto, sports, and the Channel 4 News team. It's a real waste. It's uh, sad when you lose somebody that's, you know, got so many great things in his life to look oh, forward to and such great potential. Good evening and thank you for joining us. A family finds it hard to say goodbye to 19-year-old Luyen Nguyen, the victim of an alleged racial attack. That as dramatic 911 tapes are released in his beating. That's where we begin our team coverage with Channel 4's Ariadzer. Come back. 911, you have an emergency. Yeah, someone just got beat up out here. Okay, is he injured? Uh, he's laying on the ground. I'm going to go check it out. There's about 30, 30 kids just beat up on him. Okay, now how, how bad is he injured? I don't know. About 30 kids I just yelled at. Okay, there's 30 kids down there? At least. Okay. I don't know if they're going to be here when you get here. There may have been 30 kids at the Springside Apartments that night, but police have so far arrested only five, saying as many as 15 teenagers may have lent a hand or a fist or a kick to kill Luyen Nguyen last Saturday night. Jeff, it seems like witness accounts seem to differ virtually every day. How sure are you that these five guys were involved in this murder? Well, we're sure enough to go and get a arrest warrant signed that night for second degree murder. And we're sure that we have a strong enough case to go after additional people in the next several days. Who else are you looking for? Can you tell us? We just have several individuals we're looking at right now uh, based on interviews throughout the past several days, but we're not releasing any names. 
Police tell us the scenario hasn't changed. They say someone insulted Nguyen's Vietnamese nationality, an argument escalated into a fight, and a mob attacked the 19-year-old pre-med student. Three people called 911. Police released two of the calls today. Here's what the first caller saw. 911 emergency. Uh, yeah, I want to report um, a bunch of youths um, hanging around in the Springside apartments, and they're urinating in the parking lot and um, starting to, like, get rowdy and starting to fight and stuff. Okay. It's, uh, there's a party going on on the first floor, 103 or something, and I just came in and I saw them, you know, like, looking like they were going to get ready to rumble. The community is outraged over this. Uh, we've been receiving comments from individuals from the Asian community throughout Broward County, and uh, now we're receiving calls nationwide uh, that, you know, who are these individuals to go and, and beat someone. Police say they're teenagers who have shown no remorse for what they've done. In Coral Springs, Ariadne Channel 4 News. And Coral Springs police say this case is getting national attention. They say they have received calls from as far away as Seattle wanting more information. Well, burying a 19-year-old son is something no family should have to go through, but this morning, Lu Yen Nguyen's family did. Channel 4's Katrina Daniel picks up our coverage. The tragedy of Lu Nguyen's death mirrored in the face of his younger brother. Long clutches Lu's photo, while friends keep a firm grip propping him up. His mother comes to comfort him. Mourners shaking their heads, unable to understand why the star student athlete who was studying to become a doctor like his dad is being buried instead. Family friend Tong Lee told reporters Lou's father fought alongside American soldiers in Vietnam, was jailed by the communists after the war. In 1980, Dr. Dat Nguyen brought the family to America, looking for a better life for his sons. We came here hoping to offer the best of our children to America. That's why we teach our children to love this country as their country and try to build up something here. Lu Nguyen was building a meaningful life, an honor student in high school and college, well-liked by everyone. Never find a nicer kid. It's a real waste. It's uh, sad when you lose somebody that's, you know, got so many great things in his life to look forward to and such great potential. I'm shocked. It's not like something like that. He had so much going for him. And it's not fair. While some of Lou's friends are sad, others are bitter. Well, we feel it is uh, more like racism in a way. You know, I don't think anybody could treat a human like that. It's yeah. just totally disgrace. I mean, we're human too, you know. Now, Jerry, a lot of people in the Coral Springs community are outraged at Lou Nguyen's death, so they are passing petitions. They want to pressure prosecutors to get tougher and go for first-degree murder charges against the five and any others that are arrested and convicted in his death. Okay, Katrina, thanks very much. Meantime, tonight, Coral Springs Asian American community is gathering in North Miami. The subject, the beating death of Lu Yen Nguyen. We'll be there and have a full report on the nightcast. In Hallandale, a two-year-old little girl drowned in the backyard swimming pool. Emergency crews rushed to this scene and later discovered that little Joanne Coven was the granddaughter of their battalion chief, Ramon Coven. Investigators say the young child was being watched by her babysitter when she apparently fell into the pool it has been ruled an accidental drowning. An emotional day for the family of a murdered restaurant owner as one of his killers is sentenced to life behind bars. Danny well, Evans will not be eligible for parole for the ambush shooting of Paul Sarnecki a year ago this week. Two of Sarnecki's children were in the car when as many as five gunmen approached him, robbed him, then shot him dead. My children will be safe. Your children will be safe. All of our families will be safe. Danny Evans is never going to walk again. A man convicted alongside Evans, Nakia Huggins, will be sentenced October 2nd. They helped the self-proclaimed Son of God run a murderous campaign of terror, and today was Judgment Day. A Fort Lauderdale judge sentencing Yahweh Ben Yahweh followers Job and Judith Israel to 16 years in prison. Both were found guilty in the racketeering conspiracy trial of the religious leader. He'll be sentenced in two weeks. Police say they've busted a burglary ring that's been ravaging a Northwest Dade neighborhood off 67th Avenue called the Moors. Two men arrested, including the security guard hired to protect the community. Community hardest hit. 
I knew the individual from his working here, and I was surprised. Uh, would you be surprised to know that uh, he had an arrest record in Oklahoma City for burglary? Yes, I would, uh, especially due to the fact that to get a uh, guard license in the state of Florida, I know you have to be checked out. Police say the ring's responsible for more than 80 burglaries. There could be more arrests. A huge haul on the high seas. The Coast Guard seizing a boatload of drugs. It all started with a two-hour early morning chase just southwest of Andros Island. And when it was all over, four people were busted, a boat seized, and a kilo of coke in custody. Meantime, old tropical storm Andrew is still kicking up. Brian Norcross joins us to give us the latest. Brian? Kelly holding his own, I think would be the best way to put it. 45 mile an hour winds now, not very high. Moving northwest to 12, which is a slower forward motion. Here you see the uh, course of the storm. It took that little jog last night and ran into big trouble in here from some upper air winds on the satellite picture. You can see the system to the north. It's this one up here that's affecting Andrew down here. And the circulation around this system has kind of shifted the whole storm uh, off center, so to speak. And that has disrupted the circulation around it. But if Andrew holds together and moves over in here, conditions will be more favorable. And that's why we have to continue to watch it very closely. I'll tell you all about that coming up in just a few minutes. Kelly and Jerry. All right, we'll see you in just about 10 minutes with more on our weather and again an update on Andrew. And speaking of Andrew, you can't help but wonder how the prince is reacting to the latest royal ruckus. The scandal center on these pictures and the royal romp by Fergie. That's coming up on the Channel 4 News. The president goes prime time. The latest on the National Republican Convention live from Houston. Plus, the Simpsons square off with the Preds. Find out why. The American next on family the 4 News to make American families a lot more like the Waltons and a lot less like the Simpsons. Hey, want to know how to make back to school back to cool? Easy with major cool jeans and jackets from Broward Mall. Very cool. Or outrageous vests and sweaters in super pumped up colors and styles. Very, very cool. And with bright tights and full effect foot gear, you can go from cool to cooler to coolest. This fall, go first class and back to cool fashions from Broward Mall. I feel down inside that we have a good program of checking other competitors' prices compared to ours. Recently, we checked the competitors' prices, and not just on a few items, but on 70 name brands. We compared price for price at Winn-Dixie and Publix. The results? Winn-Dixie was over 16% lower than Publix. Not going to be beat on prices. We're going to have the lowest prices. Every day. The following is a paid political announcement. Peter Deutsch, service that makes a difference. Founded the Medicare Information Program, helping older Floridians. And as state representative, protected seniors against nursing home abuse and evictions. Peter Deutsch, environmentalist, supported laws protecting the coast, the Everglades, and controlling hazardous waste. Peter Deutsch, family man, always pro-choice, a friend of education, committed to national health care. Peter Deutsch, Democrat for Congress. Making a difference for us. 40 to 50% off specials, Friday and Saturday only. At Byron's. <laughs> From your 24-hour news source, Channel 4 News continues. The primetime spotlight is on President Bush. Tonight, he will give his acceptance speech at the Republican National Convention. Channel 4's Dave Bloom is in Houston. He joins us live with more. Well, Kelly, you can hear them warming up behind me here in Houston. The president's hopes that they'll be singing his praises after tonight. We've seen an advanced copy of the vice president's speech. He says that a cultural divide separates the political parties this fall. But of course, the attention tonight is not on Dan Quayle, but on George Bush. I'm not taking any questions from the floor of the convention. <laughs> President Bush spent the morning getting comfortable with the podium, where even he acknowledges he'll be delivering a most important speech. There's a great similarity between politics and competitive athletics. For a political speech like this, adrenaline, it's an adrenaline factor, I call it. What President Bush has got to do is say, we represent this, he represents that, draw the differences starkly, clearly. And when we've done that, as we did it in 1972 and 84, we win 50 state landslides. Please steal our racing hearts. 
and clear so far, President Bush hasn't gotten the convention bounce in the polls really he'd hoped for. Even at this religious gathering, he faced an uphill battle, a heckler attacking his stand on the deportation of Haitian refugees. But the woman's cries were quickly drowned out by the president's supporters as she was led away. Many observers say tonight's President Bush will try to wrest the mantle of change away from yeah. Governor Clinton. I think he'll have to make uh, people feel like the individual voter has a chance for his life to be better under President Bush uh, than under uh, Governor Clinton. And, uh, you know, he's behind now, so he's got a job to do. Of course, the president likes to point out that four years ago, he came from 17 points down in the polls to beat Michael Dukakis. But there are three things different this year. Clinton's further ahead, Clinton's better organized, and the economy is a lot worse. Back to you, Kelly. Real quickly, Dave, do we have an idea when the president is supposed to speak? As you know, last night everything got off to such a late start that they had a, a very small audience by the time the actual nomination came around. Well, that was planned because uh, the Republicans know that uh, the television networks don't give a lot of coverage to that ceremonial event anyway, so they scheduled it last. I guarantee you that tonight, President Bush will speak between 10 and 11 o'clock prime time on the East Coast. All right. Thank you very much, David Bloom, live from Houston. Jerry? President Bush facing another foe, the smart alecky Bart Simpson. Seems Bart is having a cow over the slam the president made on his family at the convention, so he's fighting back. Check this out. We are going to keep on trying to strengthen the American family, to make American families a lot more like the Waltons and a lot less like the Simpsons. Hey, we're just like the Waltons. We're praying for an end to the Depression, too. Bart had time to prepare his retort. President Bush made a similar comment during a speech in January. Remember that one well. Yeah. Time now, 613. Stick around. Royal romance. The bare facts, so to speak, on Fergie's close encounter. That's still ahead. It looks like the streets of China. But would you believe this is really Cuba? The exclusive look inside now. And inside sports, two U.M. players land in court. Tony tells us what happened when the Channel 4 News at 6 continues. Home Depot presents surprising paint facts. Fact, now there's an interior paint with colors so bright and vivid, it makes others seem old and dull. Bear Premium Plus, the paint made with pure, clean titanium. Fact, now there's an interior paint so durable, it will stand up to thousands of scrubs. Bear Premium Plus, the paint made with pure, clean titanium. Bear Premium Plus, exclusively at Home Depot, where low prices are just the beginning. Hey, kids, it's back to school time. You hear that? No. Well, hear this. Save on Mervyn's Cheetah for Kids in time for back to school. I heard it again. We're going to have to get your ears checked. Check out the savings on Cheetah tops and bottoms. Yeah, I heard them say back to Nothing. Save on our entire stock of Cheetah for Boys and Girls for back to school. Sure is quiet tonight, isn't it? If you say so. Save on Kids Cheetah through Saturday at Mervyn's. Get the power of intelligent engineering in a new 92 Olds Achieva for $1.99 a month. Or in a new 92 Olds 88 Royale, only $2.99 a month. Or buy it with 2.9% factory financing. If you're not completely satisfied, we'll exchange it. Year-end prices and payments may never be lower at your Sunshine Oldsmobile dealer. Do the smart thing and get here now. Is this Clint Eastwood kissing a pig? It sure is. Next time on Entertainment Tonight, you're invited to a private screening of Unforgiven's home movies, and we promise you'll see a side of Clint you've never seen before. All right, fellas. <laughs> Somebody put a hamburger in my bed. Well, it's not hamburger, but it did come from a cow. It's Unforgiven's hilarious home movies, only on Entertainment Tonight. Entertainment Tonight, 7.30 on Channel 4 after a current affair. Listen to Tony Sports Updates every weekday morning on Magic 102.7. From your 24-hour news source, Channel 4 News continues. A 
search for the promised land lands a boatload of refugees in hot water. This is the scene in Port-au-Prince over the weekend. More than 150 Asians thought they spotted the U.S. coast. They jumped ship and swam to shore, ending up in Haitian custody. Still no word on what will happen to these refugees. And our sources inside Cuba reveal an unusual sight. Check it out. This is Havana's Chinese Quarter, better known as the Barrio Chino. It reflects Cuba's growing Chinese community. You'll find Chinese restaurants, pharmacies with traditional medicines, even a Chinese cemetery in the center of the city. Well, the center of controversy at UN continues to be the uh, Pell Grant scandal. Here's Tony with another development today. Well, Kelly, while the rest of their teammates were preparing for practice this afternoon, Miami Hurricane wide receiver Lamar Thomas and running back Jason Marucci were in federal court. Now, the two were indicted, as you know, on charges of illegally obtaining Pell Grant money. Several students and players who were also involved in this scandal were offered a pretrial diversion program. Among those were Thomas and Marucci. Both, though, failed to return a reply letter back to the U.S. Attorney's Office. Thomas's attorney said the receiver is not to blame. Now it is that Lamar had retained a lawyer uh, in Gainesville through his parents, and that lawyer did not follow through. And that lawyer did not contact anyone, which left Lamar in a very untenable position of not being in the program. We have four Marucci's attorney, there he is, John Gale, had no comment except to say negotiations are going on between the government and his client. Both players requested to be instated, reinstated into that pretrial program. The government will reply to that request within a seven-day period. Meanwhile, both players posted $10,000 bond. The players could be back at practice as early as tomorrow. Today, defense was the name of the game at the U.M. scrimmage. <laughs> As you can see, there wasn't much scoring. Running back Larry Jones did manage to sneak over for this touchdown. A family-based scrimmage will be held Sunday at 3 o'clock on the Green Tree practice field. Sooner or later, you'll know that the NCAA will investigate the Hurricanes on the entire Pell Grant matter. But right now, the NCAA is investigating, are you ready for this? The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. That's right, the Domers. That according to the LA Times. The paper said senior linebacker Demetrius DeBose may have illegally received gifts and a loan thus making him ineligible to play for this coming year at Notre Dame? Can't be. Notre Dame officials have made no comment, please. The Miami Dolphins signed free agent tight end Orson Mobley today. The Palmetto High School and Florida State graduate played five seasons in Denver but didn't play at all last year. He may just be an insurance policy until Farrell Edmonds is healthy, but that doesn't bother him. I have a, a few weeks to, to show the coach that I still can play. They know I'm not in the greatest shape. I've been working out some, but I haven't played in a year, so I'm not in playing shape. Uh, you know, uh, Farrell being injured, it has something to do with me being here, but uh, I'm not thinking about, you know, when he gets back, whether I'll be leaving or not. I just want to show the people I can still play. Well, in an unprecedented move, the National Hockey League announced it will play 24 regular season games in cities that don't have teams including Miami. On December the 9th, the New York Rangers will take on Tampa Bay at the Miami Arena. Tickets will not go on sale, however, for at least a couple of weeks. Let's go to the ball yard. A traffic jam in Milwaukee this afternoon caused a 20-minute delay to the start of the Toronto Brewers game. Hopefully no one missed this play. It had it all. Good hit here by Milwaukee Scotty Fletcher. Nice diving try by Candy Malinato. Two with score, but watch this. Kelly Gruber just nailed B.J. Serhoff at the plate. The Brewers led it 2-1. to one. They went on in a cakewalk, the final 16 to three. Elsewhere this afternoon, Texas beat Chicago six to one, and it took 10 innings for Baltimore to nip Seattle two to one. So the Orioles win, coupled with the Blue Jays loss, puts the Orioles three behind the Jays in the AL East. In the National League, the Pirates completed a three game sweep over San Diego, beating them seven to one, and Chicago leads San Francisco six three in the ninth. That's right, look over to the right, you'll see Kelly Craig. There you see the synchronized swimming team. The Olympic sport is in town. That's right, the International Swimming Hall of Fame is host to the fifth annual American Cup Synchronized Swimming Championships. Two Americans finished on top in today's solo semifinals. Hey, if you've never seen this sport, you might want to give it a shot. It runs through Sunday. In fact, when Kelly walked in the office today, I saw that indentation from how you put those, <laughs> those clips on. Right, Kelly? <laughs> Thanks, Tony. <laughs> Appreciate it so much, right? Time now, 6.20. Still ahead at 6. The pictures are here. Fergie caught in the buff and in a very compromising position. Plus, Brian has an Andrew update and a look at our own weather. Here's a sneak peek from our exclusive Grove Camp. <laughs> Where do you go when you're going back to school? TJ Maxx. Vacation's over. And summer is done. TJ Maxx is the place to run. Down at the Max, there's 
only one rule Minimum prices for maximum cool Back to school with maximum cool TJ Maxx. I feel down inside that we have a good program of checking other competitors' prices compared to ours. Recently, we checked the competitors' prices, and not just on a few items, but on 70 name brands. We compared price for price at Winn-Dixie and Publix. The results? Winn-Dixie was over 16% lower than Publix. Not going to be beat on prices. We're going to have the lowest prices. Every day. Your first car was probably one of these. Wow, convertible. Well, look at you now. Now's the time to buy a Chrysler LeBaron convertible. You get automatic transmission, driver's side airbag, AM, FM, stereo, and more. All for just $16,400. So relive that first feeling every day in your Chrysler LeBaron convertible. Wow. Get real advantages for the real world. See your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer today. Every kid has things they're good in, like math or art or science, and things that we are not so good in, like maybe history. But you can't just stick to what comes easy because you won't make it in school or in life. And the real world is getting more and more complex and more competitive every day. So keep on working on the tricky stuff, the tough stuff, the technical stuff, and you'll get it. You'll get ahead. The following is a paid political announcement. The goal, putting career criminals where they belong, off our streets. The person, Richard Breger. Strong commitment to this community, to safe streets, to all the good people who want to feel secure again. Richard Breger, shutting the door on the bad guys for good. Richard Breger, strong feelings for our hometown, wanting to make things safe for all of us. The support from people like you across Dade County. Richard Breger for Dade County Judge. Elect Breger for Judge. Paid political advertisement paid for by the Richard Breger campaign. Today, Eckerd Brand had a very busy day because today, about 562,000 people relied on Eckerd Brand products to make them feel better. How well did they work? Just listen. Today, thousands will trust Eckerd Brand and Acid because their Eckerd pharmacist recommends it or because of the good housekeeping seal. But about 9,000 people will take it because the home team lost again. Got to know the latest in sports? Call the 4 News Sports Hotline in Dade 358-8000, code 4444. In Broward, 731-7000, code 4444. It's free and a service of the Real Talk Yellow Pages and Channel 4 News, your 24-hour news source. From your 24-hour news source, Channel 4 News continues. Brian Norcross keeping an eye on Andrew, not Prince Andrew, since everyone's thinking about uh, the royals these days. Everyone is. Yeah, well, a lot of people. Not you, of course. No, of course not. Uh, let me tell you what the deal is here. Okay. I only give the storm about a 50-50 chance of surviving at all, but if it survives and it moves over into the area where the conditions are more favorable, then it could be a threat to somewhere in the southeast United States, including somewhere in Florida. So that's why we're watching it so closely, just because of where it's positioned out there. We'll get to that in just a second, but check the live broke game. You see a lot of high clouds. Our atmosphere has changed over a little bit here, and we're going to have a few more showers around than we have had. 86 is the temperature downtown Miami now. 84 is what it uh, should be. 94 is what it feels like with the humidity at 69%, wind southeast at 6, and no rain here once again today. Is it ever going to rain here in downtown? We haven't had it in a while. 87 at Miami Airport, 86 on the beach, 85 Fort Lauderdale. Kendall, 86. West Palm Beach now is 85. Average report today, molds and pollens both moderate. Ragweed, good old ragweed, the main defender, according to Dr. Phil. Here is the Clearview radar now. You see where all the rain has gone, at least the heavy rain, over to the west coast, or almost to the west coast. Big thunderstorms here west of Lake Okeechobee. Huge storms there. And a couple showers offshore, so we're going to have to keep a chance of showers in the forecast through the evening and nighttime hours, but just a slight chance. Here you go with storm strike, and we're looking at the uh, lightning strikes. Each one of these these indicates an actual lightning strike that took place beginning at 1 o'clock this afternoon. And we had a line that started up there, uh, west Pompano Beach, Tamarack area, uh, down through Sunrise, and then uh, west of Hialeah. This is I-75, or this is the turnpike right in here, I-75 right up here. So came right down and eventually ended up out in the Everglades, but again, mostly in the inland sections. Okay, let's get on to Tropical Storm Andrew now to locate it for you. 22.3, 62.5. 
45 mile an hour winds, which is down uh, five miles an hour from yesterday, moving northwest at 12, which is slower. Pressure very, very high, 1,500 miles from Miami and about 350 miles or so from Puerto Rico there. Now, the uh, projected place where Andro would be if it hangs together, which is the big question, puts it about here on Saturday, somewhere in that arc, somewhere in this arc on Sunday. So you see it's in an area here north of Hispaniola. Now let's go to the satellite pictures. I'll show you why that is significant. Here, first of all, is the still picture. The center of the storm is right down in here. Notice all the weather is shifted east because of upper air winds blowing across the system. Now now go to the satellite loop. And here the computer is showing you that most intense part of the storm. Remembering the center is on this bottom side here. And watch it closely. You'll see it shift left. And then I think in the last two pictures, again, it's shifting north. This uh, system up above it, this upper low, is kind of pulling on it. The question is, is that going to get out of the way and allow Andrew to shift west? Because right in here, this is high pressure, which is favorable for Andrew. So if the storm there makes it over this far, that's when we're going to be more concerned about it because it will have the potential to develop. And that's why that Saturday and Sunday forecast is significant. For us here, for the boaters, east to southeast winds at 10 knots, Seas near two feet, a light chop in the bay, 86 degrees in the surf. There's your sunrise and your sunset times. Tonight, a few showers hanging around, just spotty, about 78. 92 tomorrow, sunny times, a few more storms expected, and maybe a few showers in the morning, too. Over the weekend, same kind of story, but the beach still looks like it's the best over the weekend. That's it. We'll check Andrew again at 11. Here's Kelly. Okay, Brian, thank you. Well, they're out. You know what we're talking about, those titillating tabloid shots of Fergie topless. Channel 4's Marianne Marciano says that has South Florida a buzz. The most compromising thing about the photographs is not that Fergie is topless, but the still-married Duchess of York is, among other things, in a poolside embrace with an American millionaire. Altogether, 17 pictures splashed across the daily mirror of Fergie and 37-year-old Johnny Bryan at a French resort. In one shot, Bryan is kissing her on her toe. In others, they are locked in an embrace. She rubs sun cream on his bald head. And Fergie is pictured standing up with her arms folded across her bare chest. The photographs were published despite Brian's legal bid to stop their publication. This case provides a clear illustration of how distressing the consequences of this gap can be for individuals whom the press persistently follow without regard to any consideration of legitimate public interest. Thousands of miles from Buckingham Palace in the streets of downtown Miami, people are talking about the latest royal controversy. <laughs> you know, that's a very, very minor thing. Uh, I wouldn't even consider reading the stuff. All those royalty do that. It's chic over there on the other, <laughs> the other side of the ocean. I have hey. a question. For you. you. Who cares? Want? Well, there are a few people who might care. Fergie and Prince Andrew split up last March, but have not yet announced the terms of their separation or whether they'll divorce. Marianne Murciano, Channel 4 News. We want to know what you think in our exclusive Channel 4 News telepoll. The question, should the pictures of Fergie have been published? To answer yes, the number is 1-900-407-3333. For no, 1-900-407-44. Early results, 24% say yes, but an overwhelming 76% disagree. We will have final results tonight on the Channel 4 News Nightcast. And that does it for us. Thanks so much for watching. NBC Nightly News is next. We'll see you back here after live election coverage for the Channel 4 News Nightcast. Have a good night. Good night.